following on from last time, I continue my trip along the Droitwich canals. I encounter some very odd canal machinery, revel in the nature, spend a restless night in Droitwich, discover some unusual locks and Oinky gets in a bit of a scrape. You know, this is such a pretty canal. It's absolutely lovely. I mean, I love all the reeds that they have uh, on either side. Um, uh, not many places to moor, obviously, because of the reeds, but um, I loved that last mooring I was at. I was there for three days, and it was just great to, uh, to just immerse myself back in nature again. Um, yeah, really lovely. The previous day, I came across a very odd sight in the lock. I asked if they were dredging the lock, but this is a reed cutter, rather like a giant hedge trimmer on the water. Apparently, the only one in the country. Passing a 50 year old Springer. A Springer is a narrowboat with a V-shaped hull rather than a flat bottom. Yeah, I was chatting to a CRT guy back at the lock just there and um, he was telling me about the about the reeds and the reed beds, and uh, some of them have been specifically planted for uh, for reed warblers. Um, but he said that uh, in a couple of days' time they'll have uh, lots of cuckoos. This is apparently is known as Cuckoo Alley because they get so many cuckoos down here because uh, they're they're attracted to the reed warblers. Um, so and, and also harriers as well are, are quite frequent sight down here. So, um, uh, but it's. It's a lovely stretch of canal, it really is. Amazingly, the cuckoos arrive on the same two days every year. Walking along the towpath here yesterday with a friend, uh, we, we were walking alongside a narrowboat. Um, it was a hybrid narrowboat, so uh, basically it was um, being powered by the solar panels on the roof, which was absolutely amazing because obviously there was no engine noise whatsoever. And it just made me think it, that's what it must have been like when, uh, when the boats were, were drawn by horses. Um, you know, you can just hear all the all the bird song and all the all the natural sounds just so easily and uh, it must be such a beautiful experience actually really nice Look at that blackthorn in blossom. Glorious! There's an abundance of blackthorn around here. I'm uh, heading towards Droitwich, which is where I'm hopefully going to moor this afternoon. 
Um, the suffix which, W-I-C-H, uh, on the end of a place name, uh, means that it was involved in salt production. And uh, like Nantwich, Middlewich, Northwich, Droitwich. So, um, yeah, that's why this canal was actually built. Um, it's, uh, it's a broad canal, meaning the, the, the locks are uh, sort of obviously, you know, double size. Um, because seven trows used to uh, bring coal up here to, uh, to boil the salt pans. Um, and then obviously the salt that was produced in Droitwich was then uh, taken back down to the River Severn and, and, down, to, uh, and down to Bristol. A brine spring runs beneath the area around Droitwich Spa. It is so concentrate that it is 30% saltier than the sea and, believe it or not, even saltier than the Dead Sea. It took an amazing one tonne of coal to produce two tonnes of salt. Over the years, the barge canal, or witch cut as it was known, was improved and larger witch barges took over from the seven trows. The witch barges could carry a larger cargo of 60 tonnes and even sail across the channel to France. Some fountains vans ahead mean that the towpath vegetation is in for a bit of a manicure. Plenty of locks to do in the coming couple of months, which means the lockdown belly should get a bit of a trim too. Good to see another boat moving. It meant I could leave the lock gate open. Ladywood lock number six ahead. I wasn't talking to myself. Honest, there were some other people there. Despite the sun, it is a bit breezy, so I apologise for any wind noise. I'm sure that belly has shrunk a bit since the last lock. Ladywood lock number seven comes into view. Uh, not bloody lock. Fortunately, the CRT guy I met at the first lock is on hand to open the gate for me. Brilliant. Ladywood top lock, last lock of the day. I'm not used to all this exercise anymore. Use it or lose it, they say. Well, I reckon I've lost it. the Church of St. Michael's Salwar coming up. The name is Roman, meaning salt haulage. In 817, Conewulf, King of Mercia, gave the manor of Salwarp to Dean Bort, the Bishop of Worcester.
Coming into the outskirts of Droitwich now. Outskirts is an odd word, don't you think? Skirt being the verb to go round the edge, I suppose. And not women's clothing. Yep, modern houses, modern bridges. Definitely Droitwich. These canals, abandoned in 1939, were restored from the 1970s and the Barge Canal reopened in 2010, the Junction Canal a year later. And I bump into the reed cutters again. How's it going? Uh, not too bad. According to my Nicholson's guide, which is only a couple of years old, mooring on this section isn't advised because the river is liable to flood. But I guess the CRT have recently built floating pontoons in the basin to compensate for this. I can't say I enjoyed it much though, because I did have noisy neighbours on both sides. Morning, and one night was enough. Time to crack on. But I needed to fill with water first. first of three swing bridges coming up, you'll need a waterways key to unlock them. This bridge is left open, another two coming up. Now I met up with a really nice family on board the holiday boat, Polly. They opened the swing bridge for me and I prepared the lock ahead. This is quite an unusual lock with a fall of all of four inches, that's ten centimetres in modern money, and a swing bridge in the middle of the lock. We buddied up in the lock and I stupidly left my waterways key in the swing bridge. Fortunately their son ran along the towpath to hand it back. We are currently on the river Salwap and we need to re-enter the canal via the narrow lock to starboard. The upcoming profile was an indicator of the extremely low bridge ahead which takes the M5 motorway over the canal. Looks like Oinky the rusty pig and my TV aerial might be in for a bit of a close shave. Out the other side with a few pork scratchings and the young Lockie is ready to help me into lock number six. Then into locks four and five, the staircase locks.
Many thanks to those on board, Polly. I hope all on board enjoyed their holiday. Through Rugby Club Bridge, thankfully not too low, and Drewwich Spa Marina is on the left, and the flight of three Hanbury locks dead ahead. Unusually, these locks have side paddles, which need to be opened first. They half fill the lock before you can use the gate paddles, and this conserves about a third of the water. There were some volunteer lockies on hand too. Lockkeepers' cottages aren't what they were though, are they? Bridge 1 and Hanbury Junction, with the Worcester and Birmingham Canal ahead. I have to reverse to allow the holiday boat to turn and come through. And then it's sharp to starboard and down to Worcester. And yes, I'm filming you filming me. Thanks so much for watching. Please like, subscribe and share with your friends if you like. Photos are available from Pickfair. Details in the description box. Thanks. See you next time. <laughs>